All right, we're back for the second subsection of our talk on the death penalty. And um, we are going to talk about, in this subsection, how um, certain, how we can view the death penalty from certain different perspectives, okay? First one we're gonna talk about is religion. Um, the Christian religion and the Muslim religion especially, um, but most major um, world religions have they have parts of their holy book or or you know other founding documents that can be used to justify the death penalty. Okay, there are parts of the Holy Bible where you know God executes people. There are parts of the Holy Bible where you know the just rulers execute people. Um, similar with the the Quran. Um, so those books have been used to justify the death penalty going back, you know, since they were written. Um, but there are also passages from those same books that seem to condemn the death penalty, right? So in the Quran, there's a, there's a line which obviously translated from Arabic, says, even the taking of one life in retribution is too many, right? Which is essentially what the death penalty is. It's retribution for these, you know, you committed crimes, thus... We're going to have a retributive punishment upon you and commit murder to you back. The Bible has a couple, right? Judge not lest ye be judged, right? Judging is for God, not for us. Um, and then, of course, there's the story of, of Jesus stopping the stoning execution um, and saying, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. So religion has been used both as a justification for the death penalty and against the death penalty. 21st century, most major religious groups have come out against the death penalty. There's a, there's a quote from the, the current um, uh, Catholic Pope, um, who's, so the, the Catholic Church is very much against the death penalty. Um, so are most Jewish groups, most Buddhist groups, most Hindu groups. Um, on the other hand, there are still a lot of countries that still use it, and, and um, a lot of religious groups that still justify its use. Um, many of the, the kind of American um, evangelical churches will justify the death penalty using the Bible. Um, most, um, or I shouldn't say most, many Islamic countries still um, use the death penalty and justify it using the Quran. Um, so there's really kind of a mixed, um, a mixed reaction to the death penalty from especially those two religions, um, but in other religions as well. Politics. Politics is a really, really complicated thing, especially when it comes to the death penalty, especially in the United States. Um, you'll notice that if you go back to that map from the last subsection, the vast majority of the states that have gotten rid of the death penalty are the so-called blue states, or the states that, that side with the Democratic Party. Um, most of the states that still utilize the death penalty are, are so-called red states, or states that side with the Republican Party. So there is definitely a political dimension to the death penalty, especially here in the United States. Um, but politicians are usually worried about votes. What do, what does our people, what do, what does my, re, what do the people I represent want me to do, right? Um, and what that means when it comes to the death penalty is that um, the politicians in areas where there tends to be more support, support the death penalty and politicians in areas that tend to not support the death penalty, tend to not support the death penalty. So overall for the country, you can see that, that you know, even this is fairly recent, 2018, um, a majority of the people favor u utilizing the death penalty. Um, but on the other hand, that has, you know, the trend line is way, way, way down just in the last 25 years. Um, so in 25 years, support for the death penalty has been going very much down and opposition to the death penalty has been going very much up. Um, so this is changing over time. 
as we look at people's views of the death penalty over time in the United States, um, it's getting much more towards opposition to the death penalty over time. And that is especially even more uh, seen in when you look at um, by politics, right? So the Democrats, um, their support has been cut in half over the last you know 25 years. Republicans, they've also gone down, but not nearly as much, and they still support um, the death penalty at much higher rates than uh, the Democrats do, um, and independents are you know somewhere in the middle. Um, but it's not just by political party that people's um, views of the death penalty are, are um, influenced. So there's also, you know, there's a, a big gender gap here. Men are much more likely to support the death penalty than women are. Um, race, white people are much more likely to support the death penalty than, than other races. Age, the older you are, the more likely you are to support the death penalty. Um, with education, Okay, um, as as education goes up, uh, you tend to support the death penalty less. Okay, um, obviously there's um, the political dimension, which we already talked about, um, and then religion, right? So these different religious groups support the death penalty at far different rates. Um, and I wish they had more on there. I wish they had you know Jewish and and um, Muslim and and you know, all those other different religions, but unfortunately this is kind of the best we can do um, as far as public opinion on the death penalty by religion. But you can see that, that these different groups favor and, and, and oppose the death penalty at much different rates, um, and this is changing over time. So the politics of the death penalty will change over time along with those views. So you're likely to see um, the number of states using the death penalty go down over the next 10, 20, 30 years. And then finally, there's philosophy, right? How do different philosophies and philosophers look at um, the death penalty and, and how it's done? Um, our old friend Karl Marx, who, you know, everybody in this class, I'm sure, has heard of long before they took this class. Um, he was against the death penalty because he says it's essentially, you know, Marx's entire um, message was that it's, it's the laborers, the people who do the work that are kind of the people who are, are the most important, the people who should be at the top. Um, power should be in the hands of the people who actually do the stuff, right? Um, so he saw the death penalty as the state and again, the state meaning the government, the national government, not just the U.S. state, but the state um, putting itself above those people and saying what the death penalty says is that the state has the rights to decide who lives and who dies. And Marx thought that was completely antithetical to his belief that it is those who, who perform labor that need to have the power. Um, Kant, Immanuel Kant, um, he was the guy with the categorical imperative, um, and one of those is you need to treat people as ends in themselves, not just means to an end. So if you say the state needs to execute this guy because we want to show people that murder is wrong, and if you murder somebody, we'll kill you back, you know, this deterrent effect, right? That's, that's one of the things that people have said they want the death penalty for. So there'll be a deterrent. Um, if we kill murderers, there will be fewer murderers in the future. Kant points out that that's treating the people you're executing as a means, not as an end in themselves. So it violates his categorical imperative, right? Um, but there's two big problems with the philosophical arguments that um, are given in favor of the death penalty. Um, and, and multiple philosophers from multiple different schools of thought have come back and back and back to both of these. The first is that people aren't rational. Like so much of the reasoning behind the death penalty is that people will understand and make this rational decision to not commit murder because they know they're living in a place where they could get the death penalty for murder. And in fact, People aren't rational. Um, people don't commit murder 
especially, but people don't make choices overall, mostly, um, based on rational um, input-output pleasure-pain principles. They don't. Um, so because of that, since people aren't rational, they're not going to think about, oh, I could get the death penalty for doing this. I better not do it. They're not. They just don't. Um, and then, of course, the second problem is the problem of innocence. Right? Nobody has created, in anywhere in the world, a perfect criminal justice system. It's just not. I mean, we work for we work towards it. You know, I've devoted my life to help trying to improve the criminal justice system, but nobody has made a perfect one. Um, and as such, if we have the death penalty, that means some number of innocent people are going to be sentenced to death. And you can argue whether it's a very low percentage or, or a relatively high percentage, but you can't argue that it's zero. You can't. There's just, there's no way, knowing what we know, we, like, we are absolutely sure that some number of innocent people are going to be sentenced to death if we have the death penalty as a legal option. The question is, are we okay with executing innocent people to get whatever benefit we get from having the death penalty. Is it worth it? Is it worth killing people who didn't actually commit any crime in order to get whatever perceived benefits um, a, a state or a country is going to get from having the death penalty? Um, and I put up photos here of four people who had been arrested, tried, convicted, and were sitting in prison, some of them on death row, um, when they were found to be innocent. There was a new piece of evidence or a new something, um, and they, uh, uh, you know, the courts ultimately really realized, oh, wow, this guy sitting in prison, some of them on death row, didn't actually commit this crime. We should probably, you know, let them out. So those four people were all freed uh, from prison um, for crimes they didn't commit. Um, if you're interested in this, um, you should look up either the website or on social media a, a group called the Innocence Project. They're a really great group and I, I really enjoy um, the work that they do. But anyway, we'll be back for a third subsection on this subject. See you then.